Hi, I'm Daniel Fisher here at Sweetwater Sound and welcome to another episode of Synth Clips. Today's a very important one. This is assigning velocity to filter cutoff. Uh, and to probably make the title longer, it's assigning velocity to how much of the filter envelope goes to the filter cutoff. And different brands have different ways of doing it. It's crucial that you understand which is which or nothing will make sense when you're trying to program anything with the filter. Now, as I had said in a previous episode, when you add velocity sensitivity to amplitude, typically it doesn't make the amp louder when you play faster. It makes the amp softer when you play slower. And that is so that the amp never accidentally distorts if you didn't want that to happen. On the filter, typically, the faster you hit the key, if you have velocity sensitivity up, it will make the filter brighter. However, the Moog subsequent and Sub-37 uh, do not do it that way. They actually do it the same way as uh, Amplitude, where the more you turn it up, the darker uh, the filter gets. So again, if you don't know which is which, uh, you're going to drive yourself crazy trying to make sense out of any of it. And I'll show you how to do that. So first, let's get a, a typical setup. So I have a sawtooth wave. Uh, oscillator one's the only one. Um, I have my filter with no resonance. It's a low pass filter, 24 dB per octave, four pole. I have my EG amount, and EG amount is envelope generator. So how much of the filter generator is getting to the filter set to zero. I have key tracking set to zero. We'll talk more about both of those in a second. And, uh, and then I'll sweep the filter just so you hear what we're working with. And you can hear that the filter cutoff can go low enough on a low pass filter to go below the note. So the note, the fundamental doesn't even get through. There's your fundamental. And then it's gone. So now we're gonna set the filter cutoff for the darkest we want the envelope to act on it. And by having the envelope generator amount at zero, that is basically the darkest the envelope would let be. So now let's decide what darkest is. So I'm gonna just hold a note. Maybe that's the darkest I want. It's completely arbitrary, um, but I'm gonna pick that, okay? So now, because I have that organ setting of instant on, full, sustain, instant off. I'm gonna turn up the EG amount, so how much of this is pushing the filter. And because the sustain is all the way up, this is going to set my maximum brightness. So here we go. And you might notice um, that about more than three quarters of this turn, nothing's happening. And that's because, at least at this filter cutoff setting, at a certain point, the envelope is pushing the filter as far as it can go, and then it can't go any farther. And we call that pinning. The reason we call it that is back on old VU meters on cassette tapes and reel-to-reel -reel decks. Um, if a meter was pinned, it meant that this little post at the end of your meter, the, the, the needle was literally hitting the pin. We call it pinned. Um, you want to avoid pinning because that creates all this space and time and amounts where nothing happens because it's always at maximum. So to make the most elegant programs, you always want to set something to the max right where it stops doing anything more, but don't exceed that. And then you'll find that everything behaves much more beautifully and more the way you would expect. So um, again, I'm going to turn EG amount till it's the brightest that I want it. Okay, and now I'm going to turn the sustain level on my envelope down until it's, again, the minimum that I want. Now, my decay time lets me hear that fall from the max that I picked to the min that I picked. And the crucial thing is that the entire trail of the envelope, you're hearing it do something. It's not sticking somewhere uh, because you're not doing any pinning. It's all, all very nice and uh, responsive. So now I want to assign velocity 
to say how much of this envelope goes to this filter. And because all of these things are so interactive, as we adjust it, we may have to adjust something else, but always keep listening. And like I always say, never adjust dials, if, if never adjust a parameter if you're not re re-triggering the key over and over. Uh, especially with envelopes, you can't just hold a key. If you want to hear the whole envelope, you've got to re-strike. And so as you're adjusting thing, re-strike, hear it go through the whole thing, re-strike, hear it go through the whole envelope again, and be editing while you do that. So now I'm going to play with decay time. And turn the knob slowly. There's, there's always incredible beauty in between values that some people just turn the knob quickly and it's like, experiment, see if there isn't something magic. Okay, now let's say I like that. And now maybe I want to adjust the release time a little because maybe it's getting a little, little dark as I let go. I'm, you're hearing that you know, kind of closing. Increasing the release time will let that be a little smoother. And sometimes the release time and the decay time are going to be about the same. Um, but there are performance reasons why you might want, want to have one different than the other. Right now, they're roughly the same. But, but now it sounds natural. Now it's time to put velocity to control how much of this envelope gets to the filter. Right now, it's always getting 100%. Like I said, some brands use velocity to add to the filter. Some brands use low velocities to take away from the filter. This particular one, the subsequent 37, uh, the more you turn up velocity sensitivity, the less it makes the filter bright when you play softer. And so your strategy is exactly opposite than a synth when the faster you hit it, the brighter it gets. So in this case, because we're going to be making it darker the softer we push it, we're going to make sure that when it's off or simulating fast hits, it's as bright as we want. And the question is, is it? Is it as bright as you want? If not, adjust the amount a little bit. That's what it's going to sound like when you're hitting it the fastest at least in this model where velocity reduces the filter at low velocities. So now I hit this knob shift button and this turns this knob into my filter velocity amount and I'm going to repeatedly hit slow. And man, it takes a while to hit really slow velocities. You kind of got to have the patience. Uh, you just sort of breathe through it. Okay. And then while I'm doing that, I'm going to increase this knob until it's as dark as I want it to get. Okay, now when I go back to fast, it should be the way it was before. But now I'm going to slow down. And if you've done it correctly, um, it's going to seem very smooth and very natural. And if you have lots of uh, resonance, um, you're going to really hear the differences. And you may find, like in this case right now, I'm feeling, wow, at fast velocities, it's a little bit too bright. So you have to say, well, too bright is something that has to do with the filter cutoff, not velocity amount, because in this case, velocity amount is when I'm not hitting fast. So I'm going to lower this cutoff. And I might lower the EG amount too. Here we go. Okay, maybe that's the way I want it. So now, it's something musically useful. And it's always helpful to turn up resonance to really hear where that filter is living. But again, it's just enough to add an accent.
and the tendency to make it really disparate between a soft velocity being really dark and a fast velocity being really bright, it's very hard to perform like that with any consistency. So, so there's an example of that. It's all very interactive. And now, I, as, as I said, I'm going to talk about key tracking. And key tracking is, is really important uh, on certain sounds. Like when you're using a rompler where you've got samplers of pianos and, and various instruments, if you don't keep making the filter brighter as you go up, it actually sounds to your ears that it's getting darker. Or on a synthesizer, pure synthesis, and let's say you've set up sort of a vowel sound uh, or a certain band passy sound on a note, you want that quality to follow every note, so you need the filter to climb with you. So when keyboard track is at 100% uh, or a one-to-one -one relationship, then um, the quality of filtering will be the same no matter where you play. Um, but there are other times where I don't want to use keyboard track, and in particular basses. So let's say I've got way up here. Let's say I've got that as bright as I want it to be. Maybe when I go way down to low bass notes, I still want those at the same brightness. Whereas if I had used key tracking, get uh, the top things brighter, I might like that, but maybe I won't like as I go down to the low notes that they're going to get darker and darker and darker. Okay, so again, it's all very interactive. Um, and the way you think of key tracking, typically, if you only have one knob and no other controls, is that the exact middle note of the keyboard, probably note 64, is uh, a seesaw. And so as you do key tracking to make the top end brighter, the low end's gonna get darker. If you use key tracking to make it get darker as you go up, then your low end's gonna get brighter and brighter the farther you go down. Okay, now there are more uh, involved synthesizers that let you pick the middle and then have a separate curve for up and down. Those are great. Uh, this does not do it. Many of the synths don't do that. But if you have it, man, a serious power. Now that I've adjusted all of those things, I want to once again try all the way across the keyboard, all the different octaves. You know, as I perform the way I'm going to perform that sound, does it go between the min and max the way I want? <laughs> And the answer is no, not so much. It's, it's a little bit too dark on the soft, so I'm going to decrease the velocity amount a little bit. And so now... Another thing to consider is that adding velocity to amplitude and velocity to filter together, um, you may not need as much of both of them because making it softer and darker might make the whole thing too unnoticeable at the soft and too noticeable when it's fast. And so you'll be too bright and too loud and too dark and too soft. Um, all of these things, the only way you can do it is the way I'm showing you here, a simple wave shape and then just keep tapping and get an understanding of each of the knobs that we've talked about and just keep practicing going from slow to fast to slow to fast. And it just should seem natural for the sound that you're making. So now let's try another synth. Okay, so now I have the Roland Juno DS set up and I'm using this as a, an example of a Rompler uh, keyboard. I've got a knit patch and I have put in a really hard hit uh, Wurlitzer piano. And so you wouldn't normally do it like this, but it's going to be a really great way to show how useful the filter envelope and the filter velocity sensitivity can be. Normally, this would be switching between samples of a soft hit and a hard hit, and maybe ones in between, uh, but I'm not doing that. It's, it's no matter what, it's, it's set to that. And um, as you can hear right now, the amplitude is definitely changing. And if that's a little extreme for me, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, edit that a little bit. Um, and so I'm going right now, they have the envelope to uh, amplitude level sensitivity 32, and I'm just going to lower that. And what you'll notice is the, the hard or the fast hits will always stay the same volume, but the soft hits, I'm going to start bringing them up strangely by lowering uh, the sensitivity amount. 
So here's hard, here's soft, and now I'm lowering it. And so it still gets softer when I play slower. It's just not as dramatic. And that'll help us get the filter set better anyway. So now I'm going over to the filter section and they're calling it TVF, time variant filter. In other words, the filter's moving over time. And my first parameter is filter type and I have that set to low pass and the next parameter is cutoff. And like on an analog synth with a big knob, I now have big knob control over the cutoff. And because the envelope is going to be pushing the filter brighter, I want to set this cutoff for the darkest I want this to get. So I go to my cutoff and I just start hitting. We'll call it that. And then I go to my envelope for the filter and I come down and Unlike uh, the, the, the synths, this has uh, four settings for time and three settings for level as opposed to having them in a row. Uh, but it, the concept's the same. If I, if I go and um, have my levels all the way up at 127 and then start turning the envelope depth to filter, I'm gonna go from uh, dark to the brightest I want, and I'll stop right as I get to the brightest I want. And notice that I'm really careful to stop as soon as it stops going any farther, because what I'm doing is pinning, and we don't like pinning. So there we go, and now as I go to the envelope, if I set the, uh, what they're calling time, uh, uh, level three, but it's really just the sustain level. If I lower it all the way, and my times are all very quick, it's going to go from brightest to the darkest I had already set. And now to make it a little more musical, I'm gonna change some of the times. I'm gonna increase the decay, for example, uh, which is time three. And what I'm looking to do is emulate the way that that instrument typically loses brightness over time. And so it's just, I'm going for a natural sound. That's still too fast. And so now what I'm going to do is change the amount of envelope that goes to the filter just a little bit, just to tweak it, see if I still like it. And then I'm gonna start playing with the velocity. So right now my depth is nine. I, I like it right there. And, and remember, if this sounds harsh, one is because I'm taking the hardest hit Wurlitzer sample, and two, because what we're listening to right now is the way it's gonna sound when we hit it the hardest or the fastest. So uh, that makes sense. So now um, I'm gonna go back over to um, the velocity sensitivity, and I'm gonna start hitting it softly or slowly and increase that sensitivity until I feel it pulling the filter down. Slow, slow. And if I like that, now it should go very smoothly from the slowest to the fastest.
in general, I tell you, uh, the success of making patches that people play and go, oh, it feels so expressive. It, I feel like I'm really controlling everything. The secret is always getting the min the right, the max the right, and the way that it travels between max and min uh, the right way, whether it's velocity or aftertouch or knob or slider or pedal or whatever. All of those things, you always want this type of behavior. And even though I have no verb and no nothing, and this is just kind of a nasty patch, um, you can already tell it's more expressive. Okay, and so now, now that I have my filter set, I'm actually gonna go back to my amp just a little bit and increase its velocity sensitivity so that as I hit it, And what I'm looking for is anything that feels unnatural. I'm actually kind of happy with that. Again, it's it's a very um, interactive thing. So playing with the, the envelope amount to amp, the envelope amount to filter, the filter cutoff frequency, uh, the key tracking, uh, and then carefully messing around with the velocity sensitivity for both amp and filter. And you're gonna keep going around and just keep, you know, have chords that, that you know, I, I have, I like to do this. Whatever, whatever you hear over and over uh, that you can just right away know if something's not right. Um, and you just do it at all velocities. And I have no reverb and no delay on right now, so that would really help smooth it out and make it sound more natural. But I can hear past that. You should start hearing past that too because without all that cluttering it up, you can really hear anything you don't like about the travel. From min to max. And if you're doing FM synthesis, um, that is the essence of how to programming, is setting the min and max of how velocity responds to every aspect of it. So anyway, uh, just a quick look at how velocity can work to filters. Uh, if you are enjoying this, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you wanna see all of these synth clips in a row, we have a link uh, in the info section. If you have any question about the Moog products or the Roland Juno DS, please contact your Sweetwater sales engineer. My name is Daniel Fisher. Thank you very much for watching.